Design Challenge. I'd like to welcome you to Behind the Chair with JP Hair Design. Today our guest is Larry Sane. He's a State Farm agent here in Madison and one of my uh, mentors, I should say. You know, a lot of uh, decisions I make, I run through Larry and he, he uh, you know, tell me his honest opinion. And I'm happy to have him on the show to share, your, you know, Larry to my viewers. So, Larry, how you doing, man? Hey, nice to be here, JP. Yes, sir. Would you like to, you know, give our viewers a little background of what you've been doing? Yeah, uh, my name is Larry Sane, and I'm the uh, State Farm agent located on Park Street. And I've uh, been with the company uh, uh, this August. It'll be 37 years. Uh, I've been uh, selling uh, insurance now for the last 25, and then I did uh, uh, was involved in operations where I was involved in claim management, as well as uh, 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 doing some personnel things. Uh, and 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 I moved in extensively with the company and and, and enjoyed it uh, tremendously. That's good. That's good. So we're gonna we're gonna jump right in. Okay. Right, we're gonna jump it right in. Um, you know, I have a lot of people come to the shop. Okay. And uh, you know, sitting at the chair, you know, have a, you know, insurance agent sitting there, and you get educated on, you know, different things. So, the first thing I want to bring up is uh, the importance of having renters insurance. You know, somebody buy and get an apartment, and uh, they have, you know, a lot of assets, you know, personal things, and what what should be done? You know, a lot of people may think it, it costs a lot to have renters insurance. What would you say to someone that you know get their own uh, apartment? Well, uh, f first, uh, most people think that renter's insurance is, is expensive, but it's really not. Uh, you can purchase a renter's insurance policy for probably less than $10 a month. Mm -hmm. And uh, most people will say, well, hey, I don't have very much stuff. My stuff is old. I don't really have that much exposure. But what they have to realize is that most of these renter's policies, they have what's called replacement costs. So if you had an accident or have a fire in your building and you lose some things, the policy gives you the option to ha get back new. Okay. That's an added plus. Secondly, uh, when the fire occurs in your building or whatever, you have to temporarily move out. Uh, temporary living is included in that renter's policy. Uh, relocating your items uh, from one location to another. Um, also, the biggest thing is that if you cause the fire to happen, the policy has what's called liability, which would pay the owner mm. for the damage that you caused, as well as some of the other tenants that may have an action against you. Right. So a little, uh, a little bit of like ten bucks a month, you know. Ten bucks a month. Can, yep. Can give you that insurance. That's correct. That's correct. Um, the next thing I'd like to get to is, uh, you know, some people buy cars, and um, what type of insurance that I mean, you should have on a used car. You know, if you buy a new car. You know, just so you can be protected, because I believe in Wisconsin, you need to have um, insurance to drive a vehicle. That's correct. Uh, for, for the most part, certainly if you buy a new car or if you finance a car in any way, the person that's going to do the financing is going to make sure that you have what's called full coverage in most cases. Mm -hmm. But now the only thing that people have to understand it's just like going to the grocery store. Do you buy one banana or do you buy two bananas? Mm -hmm. Full coverage comes in, in a full range of, uh, do you buy 100,000, do you buy 200,000, do you have a $100 deductible, do you have a $500 deductible, and th uh, things like that we can price for you and make a determination as to what fits your budget. The biggest thing that most people will do though, when you get an older car, uh, and as cars get older, what you have to decide is whether you want to continue to keep full coverage on the vehicle or do you want to reduce the coverage down to liability. Now liability only covers, it doesn't cover your car physically, it covers the car that you might hit. So when your car gets old enough that financially it, it would not be that much of a burden if, if you were to hit someone with your car and you damage it and you could walk away from the car without any financial hardship. That's what I say, Another, and everybody has a different threshold. Mm -hmm. Some people can't afford to lose $1,000, some people can afford to lose five. Right. So, uh, you know, the, the premium will be adjusted based on the responsibility and the, uh, the risk that you're willing to take. Okay, good, mm -hmm. good. Now, you're a business owner. You open okay. up your business, and what type of insurance should you have if you want to protect your, your business? Well, well, certainly, uh, as you move into a, biz, uh, a building, most of the landlords will require some form of insurance uh, that will protect 
the liability aspect, and most building owners will also want to be named on the contract uh, as the lease with outline. And, and what that does, it protects that individual so that when, if something happens at your business, whether someone slips and falls or whether uh, there's an incident, <clears throat> in most cases, not only is the business owner going to be uh, listed in the suit or the allegation, the owner of the building could also be at fault in some way. So the owner of the building that's leasing to you, he or she will require that they too be listed on your insurance contract so that when anything happens that they not only have insurance on their building but also any exposure that they might be named in okay. resulting from something that you may have caused right. would be a, a, a good thing for them to protect themselves on the back end. Okay. This is a scenario. I mean, you're, you're a business owner. You got uh, liability insurance on your business inside. And someone falls outside of your establishment, but you're not the landlord. Who's responsible for that? It, 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 you, you would probably be named. It, it, the, the, the name, uh, the, the person that's injured would probably go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And if he or she has health insurance, their health insurance carrier would pay the bills. Mm -hmm. Now, that health insurance carrier wants to get reimbursed for damage that they feel that you caused. Let's just say uh, the, the, the sidewalk was not properly salted or it was not properly, the snow was not properly removed. If there's a violation uh, in city, city codes have things like after so many inches of snow, the snow has to be done this and you have to do this and you have to do that. Right. If there's any type of violation of that city code, then not only is the person that fell have a right to collect mm -hmm. uh, for lost wages, pain and suffering and all those things, but also the uh, medical facility has a right to be reimbursed mm -hmm. or the company that provided that payment to the medical facility. So everybody wants their money back. Right. So in, in situations where if you think you, you caused a problem you're gonna, uh, and, and someone else is paying for it, after they pay, whether it be automobile, whether it be renter's insurance, the wrongdoer or the person that caused the problem it's going to always find its way back to their doorstep. That term is called subrogating. People want to be, what, made whole because of your actions. I lost this money. I paid JP for the damages to his shop, mm -hmm. and I paid him $5,000. My understanding is that your building had a faulty what? furnace. And as a result of that furnace, I lo I, I, State Farm paid JP. State Farm now wants their money back. Gotcha. So it's a vicious circle, but when it's all said and done, the person that really is responsible is the person that caused the damage. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we talked about, I guess, three or four different uh, policies. So with State Farm, is there any discount with bundling policies? Y yes, there is. Uh, m most of the time, we, we've got uh, like multiple car people that have one or more cars, they can receive discounts. Uh, uh, it, it, uh, people that have students, um, we've got what's called a steer clear discount for new drivers and, and they get about a 15% discount after completing a video, uh, a series of videos, uh, driving with their parents and, and their parents signing off that they've been responsible in that way. Good grades, B averages will get you also discounts, 30% in some cases. Okay. Uh, so, so basically our rates are set to do those kind of things. Also multiple like home and auto, renters and auto, renters auto life. All of those discounts start to multiply as people purchase additional products with the company. Okay. And then safe driving and, and longevity, all of those things kind of put, come into play. Okay, that's good, that's good. So Larry, okay. um, what about homeowner's insurance? We talked about renter's insurance and you know I'm a homeowner so can we talk about some of the important things about homeowner's insurance? Well, well for the most part, uh, homeowner's insurance is going to be pretty much dictated by the, the, the people that you borrow the money from. Uh, before you even close on the transaction, they're going to make sure that you have homeowner's insurance, and they're going to make sure that the documents are in line with how the bank wants to receive the documents. So there's an added uh, safety feature there that they, they're not going to let you close okay. unless you have the right amounts of insurances. The, the biggest thing is that um, uh, uh, some people set up accounts to, for the following year to pay their insurance from that account. That's called escrowing. Okay. 
if you do that, then the bill then goes to the bank next year as opposed to coming to you. you you'll receive a copy of it, but it's not a bill. Uh, one thing with, with, with the interest rates going up and down, people are refinancing and things of that nature, you, you'd be wise to make sure that the uh, insurance company that you selected knows what company that is. Okay. Because if, if the other company gets wind of the fact that you uh, that they're not get, receiving the renewal notices, mm -hmm. then number one, it may not get paid. Number two, they may think that you don't have insurance. Okay. And what they will do themselves is force or put insurance on the property themselves. Okay. And then they will add it to your loan as the, out, I mean, as the, the, the document that you sign with them gives them permission to do that. Okay. And then what they will do, they'll go out into the open market, buy an insurance contract, thinking that you don't have it. Right. And then what they'll do is add it to the back of your loan, and that can be very, very expensive, three or four or five times as much yeah. as you can purchase for in the open market. Okay, let's talk about some of the misunderstandings about insurance. Uh, most people will, will think that money uh, that we collect here in, in Wisconsin, when things happen down in Oklahoma and Missouri, mm -hmm. that that same money, that they're taking money from Wisconsin and sending it down there to straighten out issues, and that's not the case. Okay. Uh, monies that are paid in Wisconsin stay in Wisconsin because the, the governor's just not gonna let that happen. Okay. There's a state commissioner, and, and, and State Farm tracks all this money too because it's not fair for Wisconsin to have to pay for what's going on in Missouri. Mm -hmm. uh, does it impact the company? You bet, but the company has a, a, a calculating a, a total of all monies taken in a, any given state mm -hmm. and they're able to because what ends up happening is this let's just say if the state of Wisconsin has 300 million dollars in some kind of a surplus account okay. and the storm comes through and wipes out a billion dollars worth of problems State Farm as a company has to obligate make those obligations okay. and meet those commitments however that means that the state of Wisconsin as far as State Farm is concerned, would have a, a negative balance. Right. Well, the parent company who owns all of the State Farm enterprises is the auto company. Okay. And they have the money and the resources to loan money to different identities. Okay. But by the same token, it is a loan. Okay. Understand? It, yeah, it has to be paid back. And then the obligation in Missouri will be, uh, if it runs over what they have, It'll be certainly met, but then there will be a negative balance, and a negative balance will flow into the next flowing cycles of the premiums that are needed to collect and repay that loan. Okay. So it, 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 it's calculated. People right. think it's just, just magical. Everything's happening magically. It's a, it's a, it's a science to all of this. Okay. And, and predictability, probability, all this stuff kind of, I, I wasn't that much of a believer of it, but after 36 years, for the most part, uh, probability and, and predictability and, 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 and rate structure is, 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 is very sound with State Farm. Okay, well that's good. Well there, I want to ask uh, if you have any final thoughts for our viewers. The, the biggest thing, as you, as you uh, State Farm financially is, is strong and, and, and able to meet the obligations that they make to their customer base, but some of the smaller companies uh, uh, and some of the companies that are not conducting their business in, 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 in the right way, uh, uh, I would just urge you to, as you look at purchasing, whether it be life insurance, health insurance, uh, homeowners insurance, auto insurance, we also do banking. But, but uh, uh, you know, get on the internet. You, you, people know how to do the internet. And, and all you have to do is do a search uh, all of these companies, whether it be banking, whether it be auto insurance, they're all rated by outside sources. Okay. And the outside sources will tell you financially, are they able to make, your, meet the commitment? Claim-wise, do they meet their service commitment? Uh, uh, do they have enough people to service what they sell? Do they have enough financial strength to meet the obligations up and, and coming? Okay. Well, lastly, I want to ask you to let the viewers know how they can get in contact with you. Uh, I'm located at 424 South Park Street, and uh, it used to be right next to, Lane, uh, to Lane's Bakery, but Lane's uh, sold their building, and it's going to be a big high-rise next door, but uh, <clears throat> that's where I'm located. Um, and uh, the, the phone number there is area code 608-257-5132, and uh, uh, that's where we're at. Uh, myself, uh, Charity Phipps and uh, Alicia Den, and we all uh, service State Farm and, and, and service our clients. Yes, sir. Well, Larry, it was great having you on. 
gave a lot of information. Hey, thank you. Definitely appreciate you hey. giving the information for the community and our viewers. Thank you. Appreciate it being here. Yeah, bye-bye. Thank you.